Welcome! In the first week of the course, we have seen that the immune system comprises of various components, one of which is humoral immunity. Antibodies produced in the context of an alloimmune response can be harmful to the graft. But how exactly? In this lecture, we will address the following questions. Firstly, what types of antibody-mediated rejection exist? Secondly, how do antibodies affect the graft? And finally, what treatment options are available? This information will be useful to understand the real-time patient cases in this module. Basically, three types of antibody-mediated rejection exist, based on the timing and course of the rejection event. The first is hyperacute rejection. This occurs within minutes or hours after transplantation due to donor-reactive antibodies that are already present at time of transplantation. Secondly, acute antibody-mediated rejection is a type of rejection that mostly occurs within the first weeks after transplantation through the de novo production of donor-specific antibodies. It can also develop years after transplantation, often triggered by a decrease in immunosuppression. Finally, chronic antibody-mediated rejection is a slow process in which low levels of donor-specific antibodies cause gradual loss of graft function, usually years after transplantation. Let's have a closer look at these types of rejection. As we have seen in the first week, antibodies directed against foreign HLA can arise through various types of immunization. Pregnancy is a major contributor to HLA immunization, but also blood transfusions and prior organ transplants. Professor Klaas has shown you in Module 1 that through cross-matching, hyperacute rejection can be prevented and that therefore hyperacute rejection is extremely rare nowadays. But what would happen if a transplant is performed in the presence of pre-existing donor-reactive antibodies? Upon transplantation, these antibodies will instantly bind to the HLA molecules on the graft, leading to rapid, unstoppable graft destruction. The exact mechanisms by which the graft is attacked are very similar to those active during acute antibody-mediated rejection, which we will have a look at in more detail now. Acute antibody-mediated rejection is usually caused by an anamnestic response due to previous exposure to the LO antigen. Memory B cells rapidly produce high titers of complement-fixing antibodies upon re-exposure. These LO antibodies will bind to the HLA antigens present on the graft endothelium. Multiple mechanisms will now lead to graft damage. Firstly, Initiation of the complement cascade will lead to destruction of endothelial cells by the formation of the membrane attack complex. Coinciding is the deposition of the complement split product C4D, which can be used for diagnosis of antibody-mediated rejection. Dr. Bayema will go deeper into this and will show you the pathology of this process. As a second mechanism, FC receptor-bearing cells such as neutrophils can bind the FC part of antibodies and subsequently produce several cytokines. This leads to endothelial cell activation. Both mechanisms lead to endothelial cell necrosis and platelet aggregation, resulting in a loss of blood supply to the organ. Finally, chronic antibody-mediated rejection leads to a progressive decline in renal function and is a major contributor to late graft loss. Although less well described compared to acute antibody-mediated rejection, it is clear that deposits of low levels of antibody on the graft endothelium lead to chronic damage. Since the underlying mechanisms of antibody-mediated rejection are different from those of T-cell-mediated rejection, other treatment modalities need to be chosen. Shown here is a schematic overview of B-cells differentiating into antibody-producing plasma cells after receiving T-cell help. First of all, antibodies can be removed from the circulation by plasmapheresis. Often, this is combined with the infusion of an antibody preparation from sera of healthy blood donors. This is known as intravenous immunoglobulins, or IVIG. This therapy repletes antibodies and has immunomodulatory properties, both on B-cells and helper T-cells. 
Secondly, B cells can be removed from the circulation by specific therapeutic monoclonal antibodies, such as rituximab and alemtuzumab. These agents will be discussed in the immunosuppression section. Finally, steroids are often administered, mainly to dampen the function of helper T cells. There are now several novel treatment modalities for antibody-mediated rejection, such as the complement component C5 inhibitor, eculizumab. This monoclonal antibody hampers the formation of the membrane attack complex. Alternatively, antibody-producing plasma cells can be targeted for destruction by a plasma cell selective drug called bortezomib. So what have we learned in this lecture? We have seen that antibody-mediated rejection has three distinct types of action, leading to either hyperacute, acute or chronic rejection. Binding of LO antibodies to the graft endothelium leads to complement activation, endothelial cell activation and platelet aggregation. We have seen that acute antibody-mediated rejection can be treated by the removal of antibodies or blockade of antibody effector function. Furthermore, B-cell and plasma cell depletion strategies are available. Unfortunately, limited treatment options exist for hyperacute rejection and chronic antibody-mediated rejection. This is one of the problems that still needs to be solved in the field of transplantation.